the Honourable Member for Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I thank my colleague from Hamilton North for uh, such an amazing um, introduction. I'll, I'll be able to build on that, I hope, uh, and actually dispense with parts of my own speech. Um, you know, the government would have us believe that this is a merely technical or housekeeping bill, and they accomplish this in part by messaging that it simply codifies existing drafting practice for regulations. Uh, the use of incorporation by reference, and we even have journalists now treating this as a routine bill. I don't know if there are any journalists watching this debate for that very reason. In fact, S-12 is anything but innocuous. Speaking in my capacity not only as the member from Toronto Danforth, but also my capacity as official opposition critic for democratic reform, it seems to me that this bill is actually an anti-democratic reform, so-called. It is a big step backward for open government and, indeed, for accountable government. Let me be clear that my focus in my remarks is on the endorsement in this bill of a so-called drafting technique known as incorporation by reference, in particular, open incorporation by reference, whereby the words, as it is amended from time to time, are inserted to signal that a document that's incorporated by reference or other materials when it's changed by external bodies, automatically enters back into the regulation and uh, continues as binding law without any further intervention uh, by Parliament. This is in contrast to static or closed incorporation by reference, whereby Parliament, the Joint Committee on the Scrutiny of Regulations, will actually know what document is being incorporated by reference, will be able to review whether it's appropriate that that document comes in and, and knows when it passes on the regulations. Uh, what it's dealing with. Now, so from, for some years, the Standing Joint Committee on Scrutiny of Regulations that I just mentioned has expressed concern about the use of open incorporation by reference for reasons that I'll discuss a bit later. In 2000, the Joint Committee called for legislative amendment to the Statutory Instruments Act to require that any use of open or ambulatory incorporation by reference be explicitly authorized by each statute as that statute is adopted by Parliament as part of its provisions that authorize regulations. Without such explicit authority being in each statute, the report says that as regulations would not be allowed to use this technique of open incorporation by reference and would only be allowed to use the technique of incorporation by reference at a known date or closed incorporation by reference. Now S12 gives carte blanche to the executive branch to use incorporation by reference uh, of an open sort with no constraints of any consequence, Mr. Speaker. This means regulations can change over time when external bodies decide to revise their documents that, are, that have been incorporated by reference, and, by par and Parliament has no further oversight role. These external changes become law automatically with no further action required from the Canadian state or from this Parliament, other than in S-12 a very uh, vague, unelaborated, undefined duty to make sure the document with its amendments is quote-unquote accessible. So any number of changes by non-governmental organizations, industry bodies, international bodies, or even foreign governments to their own documents that have been incorporated by reference uh, can slip into our system with no scrutiny. Now, for example, there is something known as Parliament's power of disallowance of regulations. Uh, a regulatory provision can be disallowed on a motion of this House, but that process isn't triggered until the Joint Committee on Scrutiny of Regulations actually makes a recommendation to this House and to the Senate uh, to disallow the regulation. They won't even have a chance to make such a recommendation with respect to amendments to documents that have occurred uh, on the initiative of an external body that's entered into our law automatically. This never comes back to the Joint Committee. Now, the very description of what's at stake with S-12, I hope, should reveal to the average listener the threats presented by ambulatory or open incorporation by reference to democratic accountability as well as to the rule of law by the fact that after this bill passes, if it passes, the executive branch may not only incorporate known documents produced by external bodies, this code, that resolution, those guidelines, these rules, 
but may also yield to that external body effectively the power to change its document in a way that automatically becomes legally binding in Canada. Now we live in a regulatory era where there are some 10, uh, excuse me, 3,000 regulations making up over 30,000 pages versus about 350 statutes making up 13,000 pages. Without careful scrutiny by Parliament of executive power, our democracy hollows out. Now we already know we, how we have been witnessing what some scholars call new political governance, whereby concentrated executive power comes to dominate the parliamentary branch. In Canada, the Prime Minister, the PMO, and a small clutch of ministers have effectively engineered a takeover of our Westminster system in recent years. To add to that phenomenon, greater and greater power in the executive to incorporate, by reference, materials produced by bodies with no accountability to Parliament, let alone the Canadian public, in the name of economic efficiency or easing the burdens of regulators or flexibility is something we must be seriously worried about. It makes the problem of executive domination of Parliament even worse. Now before I talk a little bit more about why democracy and the rule of law are affected by S12, let me comment on one other problematic feature of the current process whereby S12 has come to us. Now I'm not referring to the fact that it started in the Senate. Let's leave that to one side. Rather, I'm talking about how the government wanders into this House and has the chutzpah, frankly, to claim that S12 comes from the Senate unamended, as if it was truly a routine bill merely about regulatory drafting technique that the Senate unanimously adopted. In fact, this bill caused great debate in the Senate. Senators returned to the debates from the mid-2000s that ended up producing that 2007 Joint Committee report I referred to, and they objected to how S-12 does not take seriously problems of transparency and accountability and more broadly, the fundamental principle of the executive branch's subordination to Parliament. Reasonable amendments were moved, but what happened? Well, the current character of the Senate revealed itself in all of its glory. When Conservative Senators voted to defeat every single amendment, this body, which was created in 1867 for two reasons, to be a regional voice in the Federal Parliament and a chamber of sober second thought, has simply become an extension of whipped party politics. The rational arguments of some senators on S-12 were simply bulldozed by Conservative senators acting according to PMO instruction. Now, the government did respond to that 2007 report that I mentioned, and they focused on one very technical argument that the uh, Joint Committee had made, that allowing the executive to send on to another body the power to change something that had been incorporated by reference uh, and have that become automatically part of our law. That's something called illicit or illegitimate subdelegation. The government focused on this and it made a whole bunch of comparisons to something known as interdelegation. Parliament delegating powers to the provinces to, to legislate. And they created this kind of equivalence between that situation and the situation we face talking about how it wasn't a problem that the provinces could be allowed to uh, continue to amend their legislation or their rules and have a federal statute incorporate that by reference even as those rules change. But they failed to notice two fundamentally different features about that situation. One, the provinces are governed democratically. And two, they're within Canada. So the fact of deferring to external rules by international actors who have no democratic process as part of how they produce their rules is totally glossed over by the way the government responded to the committee's report. Uh, they also ignored a serious rule of law concern. What happens when a document is amended by an external body in a way that maybe we can't expect, in a may way that's maybe radical, uh, in a way that actually is problematic? Our Joint Committee for Scrutiny of Regulations has no opportunity to check whether or not those new changes fall within the ambit of the Act. Rule of law problem right there. How about a mega rule of law problem, Mr. Speaker? The Charter of Rights is totally ousted by the ambulatory incorporation by reference pro process. Section 
of the Department of Justice Act requires that Parliament double-check after the executive has double-checked that a regulation does not offend the Charter. That doesn't get done with new uh, amendments to incorporate it by reference regulations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.